Good evening and welcome to the Herodon High School Class of 2020 Graduation Ceremony. I'm Graham Branscombe, your Student Council President. My fellow Vice President, Sam Catania, and I are honored to serve as the Masters of Ceremony and lead today's celebration of our class's accomplishments and time together. We'd first like to acknowledge the rather unique format of tonight's ceremony, and we thank everyone for joining us virtually amid these unprecedented circumstances. Now, please enjoy some words from my Vice President, Sam Catania. Hello, Harriton, and welcome. Looking around the world, and especially the country today, I was initially concerned that 2020 was off to a rough start. You watch this video from home, sheltered in place by a global pandemic. Our streets are filled with pain and sorrow for the loss of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many others who have had their lives robbed from them simply because of the color of their skin. Class of 2020, to say that we have work to do would be an understatement. We need to move a mountain. And so in my single paragraph that I've been awarded, I have one request. Don't normalize the noise. Refuse to enter that artificial muffled sense of security within yourself and address the problems that happen around us every day, problems that many of us have for so long ignored. High school is over, but continue to educate yourself and be the change you wish to see in our world and in our country. To my classmates, many have said that 2020 is off to a rough start, but I do not believe that this is the case. Together, let us not make 2020 defined by pain, but by our coming together, by our progress, by our revolution. Now, please rise for the national anthem. Thank you, Sam, for such inspiring words. And now, please enjoy listening to our Herodin alma mater from the Symphony Orchestra and Concert Band coming right to your living rooms conducted by our very own senior, Ezra Frank.
Thank you once again to our incredible symphony orchestra and band for providing today's musical entertainment. We are truly grateful at Harriton to have such a world-class music program. It is now my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome my curly-haired officer counterpart, my late-night spreadsheet grind time buddy, my most reliable confidant, my friend, my mentor, your favorite officer, and the hardest working student at Harriton. Harriton High School, please give a virtual round of applause to your one and only student council president, Graham Branscom. Welcome, everyone. I want to first thank the administration and my fellow student council officers for this opportunity. And to the parents, the grandparents, the friends, your weird uncle who shows up to these types of events, please join me in welcoming and congratulating the Harriton High School Class of 2020. I hope you had safe, journal, safe travels on your perilous journeys to this ceremony as you watch from your couches, your beds, your kitchens, your toilets. Despite the inherent uniqueness of this year's graduation ceremony, I'm proud of how far we all have come as a class. As your student council president, I'm honored to be chosen to speak to you all today. In a class made up of top Science Olympiad competitors, state athletic champions, national merit scholars, and TSA state officers, somehow I'm the one who's supposed to impart wisdom on you. Me, the same kid who wore a mustard yellow wool dry troop jacket to freshman formal. So in all, I'm humbled to speak to you before today. Speaking of freshman year, we've come a long way since Mr. Johnson first taught us Ram Pride during move up day, and don't forget the swoop. As scrawny freshmen, we signed up for 62 clubs during Ram Day, stayed up all night working on a Global Studies One map about transatlantic triangular trade, and thought fidget spinning was cool. Yet now we sit here today, 112 standardized tests, approximately 1,000 find a seats from Mr. Perone, 720 daily menu emails from Ms. Diane, and 12 tilapia fish later, we've made it. Throughout our four years, we've all come up with our own stories from high school to tell our children and grandchildren years from now. My favorite story is about a kid I met a while ago. I remember one day in eighth grade, I was sitting out in the Welsh Valley Quad when I looked over and saw a kid who I've never seen before. He had blonde hair and flip-flops on in the middle of January, sticking his hand out for me to, with confidence to shake. When I asked who he was, he said he was a brand new student at Welsh Valley and he wanted to introduce himself. From the start, I could tell that this kid was different. While most kids our age would rather introduce themselves by Snapchatting as streaks, this kid said, nice to meet you. I know I'm new, but I just wanted to introduce myself. The remainder of middle school, he started out with a small group of friends who not only liked him, they adored him. His charisma, kindness, maturity, and overall friendliness gave him a small, yet ardent fan base in Welsh Valley. Four years later, it was the same kid who first introduced himself to me in the Welsh Valley quad, who was now the first one to rush onto the field when we beat LM in football. Four years later, it was the same kid who was nominated as a herd leader for our class. Four years later, it was the same kid who had, who had the school mascot named after him. Four years later, it was the same kid whose own fate and contagious luck helped us beat LM yet again in basketball, which just so happened to land on his birthday. This kid is Jack Odior. Jack, other known by his nickname, Odie, shows us how it's possible to go from the new kid in school to literally having the school mascot, Odie the Ram, named after you. How? Well, Odie is different. If you don't know Jack, think of everything your grandma ever wanted in you, and that's him. He, ne he never took any relationship he formed for granted. He was never cocky nor overbearing. He was just who he was. He made sure to surround himself with those who loved him, and re he reflected that same love back. While most of us as naive freshmen were concerned with getting the most followers on Instagram, Odie was concerned with surrounding himself with a small group of people who loved him. The same small group, of course, which soon turned into our entire class. Odie shows us that it's important to surround yourself at first with a small group of people who truly love you. Because the people who you surround yourself with will determine what you value. If you surround yourself with people who are materialistic, you'll value material. If you surround yourself with people who are selfish, you'll only value yourself. 
But if you surround yourself with people who care for others, you will value other people. If you surround yourself with people who are loving, then you will value love. But this isn't a story about one person. This is a story about 303 people graduating today who all have a little bit of what Odie had in each and every one of them. Even though we didn't all have the school mascot named in our honor, Odie's story represents our ability as a class to consistently express kindness and love for those who we surround ourselves with, especially during times of adversity. So surround yourself with people who love you, even if it's over Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. We are surrounded by great people at Harriton. I now have the pleasure of welcoming Harriton's one and only principal. He stands about five foot nine and one quarter inches. He rocks a power vest. Mr. Drumroll, please, Weinstein. Good evening. I'm Scott Weinstein, principal of Harriton High School. And on behalf of Superintendent Mr. Robert Copeland, the members of the Board of School Directors, and our esteemed faculty members, I'd like to thank you for joining our virtual graduation ceremony. A great Harriton tradition is starting by welcoming our distinguished Harriton alumni and thanking them for joining us tonight. Alumni, while we would rather have you leading our processional, we thank you for watching us tonight. Please take a moment to stand in your homes or wherever you're watching us to be recognized. Thank you. I stand at this podium on June 8th. Most of you are viewing this commencement on June 16th when it airs for the first time. I share that because our news is changing so rapidly and our country's challenges have become so great specifically the global pandemic that has changed our world and the issues of social justice that will hopefully spark the necessary change in our world. I hope you're receiving this message while well, healthy and safe. You may not have walked across the stage at St. Joseph's University, where we typically hold commencement, but you will walk into history together. While you have lost a lot of the expectations of the closing of the senior year, I do not believe long-term that will be outweighed by what you have gained. Your resilience for enduring this loss and the gratitude you've learned by not taking life for granted will serve you well for years to come. This unites your class when unity is something needed now more than ever. But if 2020 didn't happen as we experienced it, what would have happened? I found this poem by Leslie Dwight that shares an interesting perspective. Quote, what if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all." End quote. I will now pivot and transition, because tonight is reserved for celebrating the class of 2020. My first day at Harriton High School as the principal was your first day of high school. It was on September 6, 2016. We started together, and you will always hold a special place in my heart. Class of 2020, what a special class, truly. I get the honor of being able to address you tonight, but know that the admiration I share is on behalf of our Harriton faculty and staff, most of them watching you tonight. Throughout our years, we had the opportunity to celebrate you on various occasions, from the national merit recognition, the athletic accomplishments, the amazing performances coming from the Harriton Theater Company, Dr. Harriton, the impressive, the impressive art created by our students, the beautiful music played by our musicians, our incredible academic teams, and our many service organizations. As proud as we are for all of your impressive accomplishments, we are equally as proud of those who are fighting battles, some that we knew very little or even nothing about. Personal hardships, losses, setbacks, and adversity that came in many forms. It is not only the most accomplished we honor, but the many of you reached this milestone in various different ways. The last couple of years, our 12th grade English teachers made their final writing assignment a commencement speech. During last year's commencement ceremony, I used some quotes from our students. It was by far the most positive feedback I've had from a speech. 
I really didn't know what to make of that, but lesson was learned. Let the students share their words. People seem to like it way better. Listen to what Emily Sandler said. When I reflect on the end of my high school experience, it is not Dr. Fauci flattening the curve, not getting out of my pajamas for days, not the canceled senior projects and IB exams, not the unstocked supermarket shelves, or what we did not get to do as a class that I will remember. I will remember late nights and early mornings, lunch in library with my friends, Dr. Harriton, the camaraderie and pride I felt as a Ram, and the incredible support of the Harriton High School community. The connections and memories that we have made as a class will forever endure. Bridget Tucker shared this, at Harriton, we have a motto that is Ram Pride, and those five letters in pride have a deeper meaning behind it. Don't act like you don't know because we have all heard Mr. Johnson's speech about 20 times starting on move up day, and we become masters at the head swoop. Pride? If this was live with an audience, I'm imagining a lot of crowd laughter to make this moment way less awkward for me. Kennedy McCauley, being able to tell my story and expressing my emotions helped me. I was able to see my outlet for my grieving was talking. And it's okay sometimes not to be okay. You're a wise young woman, Kennedy. Paige Fif Fisher shared this. My favorite quote from, by Andy from The Office. I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left. Paige continued to share. I know friends that I now consider my family. And while not all of it was happy, there were some tears over tests and some stressful days. I would give anything to do it all again. Lindsay Cannon, if I had known we would never have another lunch and learn in the library, I definitely would have appreciated that day more. Thank you, Lindsay. That is the gratitude you've learned that I referenced earlier. Christina Vartanov, I think of this situation as a test that would determine who is capable of kindness during a dark time. Jarrett Boyd said, I have had role models such as my teachers help me get through my everyday struggles in high school. I think Harriton High School has given me opportunities to succeed to the best of my abilities, offering teachers that care and are willing to take time out of their day to listen to what you have to say. Thank you for sharing that, Jarrett, to let me shout out our teachers. Our teachers truly are the best. Ava Paternoster. Ava, I used a lot of your words, so here it goes. Since the day we entered school, we have been labeled the class of 2020. Even when we were five and six years old, there was some magic to that number. 2020, of course, we have all heard the phrase 2020 vision, which means to have perfect, clear sight. So that was our destiny, to be the class of students who would be able to see life clearly, to know who we are and where we were going. And here we are in 2020. Who could have ever predicted that this would be the magic of 2020? Here we are, the class of 2020, our collective future is essentially on hold. This is the epitome of irony that we, the class of perfect vision, cannot know what even tomorrow holds for us. We will not be content merely to make it through this or any other dark time. We are the class of 2020. We are the torchbearers, those who bring light into the gloom to lead the way through and emerge shining on the other side. I will end with a few of my own words that includes a challenge and a statement. I ask you that wherever you go from here, you make it a better place than you found it, as you did with Harriton High School. Be that torchbearer that Ava wrote so eloquently about. Class of 2020, I share with you on behalf of our faculty and staff who wanted so desperately to be with you tonight, that we are so proud of you, and we sincerely wish you the best as you go forth to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein, for your inspiring remarks. On behalf of my classmates, I want to thank Mr. Weinstein for having a true and genuine passion for education and strengthening our school community throughout these last four years together. Now, for the set of speeches from the people who you've never seen before but control your everyday lives, our school board directors. Please welcome School Board President Dr. Melissa Gilbert. Thank you, Graham. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of School Directors, I would like to welcome everyone and offer our sincerest congratulations to our graduating seniors, the class of 2020, and also to your families. 
It is the tradition of this board that if your student is great graduating, you have the honor of speaking at commencement on behalf of the board. It is a great privilege for me to introduce my friends and fellow board members, Lucy Klein, Ben Driscoll, and Peter Lee, parents of graduating seniors, Patrick McCann, Jack Driscoll, and Anna Lee. Congratulations again to the class of 2020. Thank you, Dr. Gilbert. It is an honor to speak today as I know firsthand what a great group of students you are. None of us could have imagined that your senior year would be like no other, ending amidst a global pandemic and a heartbreaking reminder that we must continue to work for equal justice. I'm sure we would all like to hit delete and refresh. But you are resilient and determined and it's reflected in your achievements. You have earned many academic accomplishments through Model UN, DECA, and Latin Club, and many individual achievements in math, writing, and art, among others. You delivered exceptional performances with the Hareton Theater Company, the choirs, orchestra, and bands, and created amazing art displayed throughout the school and in art shows. Over the past four years, your classmates have won team and individual competitions and championships in lacrosse, soccer, crew, hockey, and tennis, to name a few. And I would be remiss not to mention the boys' basketball win over Lower Marion this year. You are a class dedicated to service and driven to activism. You demonstrated against gun violence, organized a march for Black Lives Matter, and held voter registration drives. Dr. Harriton raised over $60,000 for the Lower Marion Township Scholarship Fund and the Dream Camp Foundation, shattering last year's record by more than $25,000. I'm confident that had you had the opportunity this spring, you would have succeeded in defending your girls lacrosse state championship, brought home many more TSA and speech and debate awards, and most certainly taken first place at Science Olympiad Nationals. I am proud that by virtue of your graduating from Harriton High School, you have the privilege of an excellent education. And it is now your responsibility to move us all forward, to ask the hard questions, to not be satisfied with the answers, to listen, to really listen, and to take the time to find better ways and better answers. Here's to the class of 2020, full of grit and determination, wise beyond your years through circumstances outside of your control, looking ahead to create a future that holds the promise of a better world. Congratulations. Thank you to the administration, staff, my fellow board members, and most importantly, the graduates and your families and guardians for giving me this opportunity to speak today. As I don't have any real wisdom of my own to pass on to you, I will highlight two phrases that I hope you'll remember and use as guidance going forward. The first can be found in many contexts, such as the Declaration of Independence, as well as the autobiography of Chris Gardner that was made into a movie starring Will Smith. This phrase is the pursuit of happiness. But what and where is happiness and how is it pursued? You are the perfect example of how happiness can be found everywhere. You've demonstrated this in the various activities you've engaged in from athletics, science Olympiad, musical groups, theatrical performances, the Harridan Banner, science and language clubs, and countless charitable organizations and events you've conducted over the years. I believe you found happiness not only in the final events themselves, but maybe more so in the countless hours of practices and preparations you spent honing your skills and working towards those end results. You found happiness not only in your own endeavors, but shared in the happiness of your fellow classmates when they achieved a goal by a team or a club of which you were not directly a part. And even if none of the organized groups were for you, I know each of you found happiness when your friends achieved happiness in their own way. Please remember to always look for happiness in others as that will most definitely bring happiness to you. To demonstrate this point, I would have you write down a number on a piece of paper to quantify your level of happiness at this important accomplishment you have achieved. Put that piece of paper away. Someday into the future, when you graduates are watching your own children graduate from high school, I would have you write down your measure of happiness at that event and compare it to the number you would write today. I think you would be surprised at which number would be larger. The second quote I ask you to remember is this, life won't wait for you. If you practice these two phrases together so as to find the time every day to pursue happiness, either in yourself directly or especially in the happiness of others, 
Yours will be a life well lived. Congratulations and good luck. It is now my distinct honor to introduce my fellow board member, Mr. Peter Lee. Thank you, Mr. Driscoll. As the parent of a graduating senior, I'm one of the lucky board members getting to congratulate you today. Before we get to the congratulations, however, I want to recognize that the recent months have been a stressful time for our country and our world. And the challenges we continue to face have affected us all, especially the graduating seniors. I'm sorry that you weren't able to experience the usual senior celebrations during the last months of school. And I'm sorry that you weren't able to have a typical graduation ceremony. These were real losses. However, despite all the switch ups, I just wanted to say how proud I am of the Harriton community, especially you students, for how maturely you handled yourselves with all of the uncertainty and shelter in place in effect. When we come out the other side of the events of the past few months, the world will be a different place than it was before. I'm not sure what will happen or how it will look, but I do know that times of great change are also times of great opportunity for creative and motivated minds. And I don't know of a more creative or more motivated group of young people than the graduating class of Harriton this year. I'm proud of all of you and know that you will be a driving force in the years to come. Congratulations, Harriton class of 2020. I look forward to watching you all change the world. Thank you, Mr. Lee. I am now honored to introduce the 2020 Harriton salutatorian, who is a lot smarter than I will ever be, Ravi Balasubramanian. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to commemorate this very special occasion despite the ongoing global pandemic and national crisis. These are complicated times, but to conserve some sense of normalcy and to bring some joy to the conclusion of our four years, I'm gonna focus on the happiness and humor of our high school experience. I'm supposed to give a speech right now about graduating, the knowledge we've acquired over these four years, or something like that. However, I don't really want to. Usually speeches try to sound inspiring, moralistic, or serious, and end up being a bit awkward instead. We all know how that goes. We all had to do presentations in English class at some point. <laughs> Honestly, instead, I just want to say one thing. Thank you. Thank you for four amazing years. Freshman year, when we were all, for lack of a better word, fresh and excited about high school. I mean, yeah, we were at the bottom of the pecking order, but it could only go up from there. Sophomore year, when we rose up in that pecking order. That's it, really. Uh, the work got harder, and there was more of it. Junior year. Oy vey, that was quite a trip. <laughs> Senior year. Well, as the shriveled head in the night bus in the third Harry Potter movie would say, it has been a bumpy ride. But overall, it has been a delightful high school experience. So thank you. I am also thankful for all the fun and exciting things we did together. I'll be honest, when I came to Harriton, I never expected to find such diverse personalities. I have learned that Harriton has a lot of ists. Artists, scientists, roboticists, athleticists, science olympists, gamists. We got capitalists, communists, Anarchists, Super Smashists, Two Blue Mana Counterspellists, and turn in that essay late because you stayed up all night and procrastinatedists. <laughs> I'm happy to inform the audience today that upon further inspection, I do not believe we have any feudalists. So, humanity, you got out lucky. Thank you for being such a wonderful, interesting, and at times complicated group to be with. <laughs> and now we get to the part where my speech does become a bit awkward. Thank you for being so kind. High school can be rough, and in my case, it started about as stereotypically rough as possible. I joined this district as the new kid, a strange man in a strange land. And yet, 
you were all so warm and welcoming. I cannot even express in words how grateful I am for that. I hate to be that guy who pretends to be an adult and lectures others on how to be moral beings, but kids, keep it up. And as my 100-year-old great-grandmother in Bombay would say, Dairiyama iru. Be courageous. So as we all go into the brave new world, hopefully when coronavirus decides to take a vacation, I want to wish us all the very best of luck and the brightest of futures. Thank you. Oh, and um, P.S. I did borrow a few ideas for funny lines from other comedians, and I would normally cite them in MLA format, Times New Roman, 12-point font. But to hell with that. We've graduated. Peace. Thank you, Ravi, for your remarks, but also the attitude of positivity and happiness you've brought to Harriton each and every day. There isn't a day you come to Harriton without the biggest smile in the world on your face, and you have a knack for making people's days. Keep it up. Next up, Harriton, is your one and only Val Victorian. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Sun Mi Zhao. It's difficult to reflect on the past four years when we can't physically convene with the people who have helped make these years so special. To the teachers, staff, administrators, mentors, and family members who encouraged us, and more importantly, put up with us along the way, thank you. We would not be here today without you. If you told me a year ago that we would be in the midst of a global pandemic, that toilet paper would become a valuable commodity, and that I would have a lawn sign staked outside my house that makes me look like some sort of Harridan Class of 2020 campaign supporter, I would have thought you were insane. And yet, here we are. When I woke up on Thursday, March 12th, I didn't know that would be my last day at Harridan. I didn't know that would be my last email from Mrs. Berkman telling me that the sushi chefs were here. It's true when they say, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Down the road, we will continue to have firsts and lasts without us even realizing that it's a first or a last. We will encounter unexpected surprises, big and small, good and bad. But if these past few weeks have taught us anything, it's how to take those unexpected challenges in stride. There is, however, one moment that shouldn't have ever been a last. Two years ago, our friend and classmate Joey Baskin was taken from us far too soon. During my last challenge class with him, Joey was given the task of standing at the front of the class and making us laugh. And as you know, making people laugh wasn't a hard thing for Joey. I recall it being a particularly stressful week for me. Midterms were coming up, and I was preparing for a science Olympiad competition. So at a time when I really needed it, thank you, Joey, for giving me a laugh. Thank you for volunteering me to speak up in that class because you love to talk and you knew that I was too shy to talk. We miss you, Joey, and we will always remember the many times that you did and continue to put smiles on our faces. For me, this story is a reminder that the simple interactions we share with each other, even in the most ordinary of days, are the ones that we too often take for granted. Sure, we may have missed out on some of our end of year traditions and celebrations, but hold on to the lunch and learns you shared with your friends and the times you made that awful trek up the crowded stairs together from the first floor to the third floor. I think we will find that those seemingly normal experiences were some of the ones that made high school the most meaningful. As we move on into this next uncertain phase of our lives, I hope we all will carry with us the many memories we have made at Harriton. When it's 2 a.m. and I want to do everything except study for my exams, I know I'll definitely remember the shenanigans that go on when you let the Latin club be in the pep rally. I'll remember that sweet feeling of victory when we rush the field after the football game against LM. I'll remember enjoying the plays and musicals my friends worked so hard to put on, and the hours upon hours I spent with the Science Olympiad team. And yes, I'll probably also remember that darn lawn sign that really does make me smile every time I see it. So thank you. Thank you, classmates, friends, and that one kid in every class who really takes one for the team and asks for an extension. 
Through all the ups and downs of our time together at Harridan, you have given me memories to last a lifetime. I'd like to close with a line from Virgil's Aeneid that we translated in my Latin class this year. After being shipwrecked by a devastating storm and losing his friends at sea, Aeneas tells his crew, for san et hike olim meminisse uabit. Its translation is, and perhaps one day it will please us to remember these things. For a lot of us, senior year didn't go exactly as planned. But as we look back on how we arrived to this day, I hope we can take some time to remember and appreciate the people who made us laugh, the people who comforted us in our worst moments, and the people who cheered us on in our best moments. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Sunmi, and a warm congratulations again for being our valedictorian. Perhaps even more impressive than your academic excellence is your brilliant coordination of the Latin Club pep rally performances. Now, for some final remarks from our superintendent of Lower Marion School District, Mr. Robert Copeland. Thank you, Graham. Good evening and welcome to what for all of us is a new and somewhat strange way to celebrate your commencement. Before I begin my remarks, though, let me take a minute to publicly thank your high school principal, Scott Weinstein. He, along with his team of teachers, support staff, administrators, and the central office staff in health, community relations, and custodians, were determined to make this as special an event as possible. They had been working for over a month, considering everyone's health and safety while ensuring that you and your families can share a meaningful and memorable high school graduation, even if you're doing so from your own homes. You know, as a former history teacher, I was looking for words of inspiration through historical quotes, but I actually found something that made more sense of the year from J.R.R. Tolkien. I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf. And so do all who live to see such times. But this is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. So this is not how any of us expected to celebrate this, your one and only high school graduation. It is not how you or we expected to honor your hard work, team spirit, academic honors, and final class gathering. But we have to decide how to use this time and how to best look forward. Because while high school has ended, this is also a commencement, a beginning of the rest of your lives and what you still have to accomplish. We have barely reached the midpoint into the year 2020. So far this year, we have seen the devastating impact of an international pandemic that has taken hundreds of thousands of lives worldwide. We have also seen the taking of one life in Minneapolis in the most horrific and senseless way imaginable. It is hard for someone like me, who remembers the days of dogs being let loose on people trying to gain social equity and justice and the burning of cities 53 years ago, to think that we would witness the death of George Floyd I had to explain to my own children that this has happened before. As I was reflecting on this, I ran across an article that noted that there were only four black CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. One of them, Jai Zeitlin, president of Tapestry said, we can replace our windows and handbags, but we cannot bring back George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, Eric Gardner, Trayvon Martin, and Emmett Till and too many others, each of these black lives matter. Yes, these will be memories that you will likely never forget. I remember what I was doing even in elementary school when President Kennedy was assassinated, later when Martin Luther King was killed, when the Challenger space shuttle went down, and then of course the World Trade Center and Pentagon on 9-11. Hard things, tragedies tend to stick with us. But so do good things, good times with family, the first day of kindergarten. I bet your parents remember it and may even be thinking about it now. 
The time you won a race, the time you worked hard on a school project and your teacher made a special fuss over you. Perhaps even that first kiss. I know many of your fathers believe that time has yet to come. Throughout the rest of 2020 and the rest of time, you will remember the good and the bad that have marked your senior year. My hope is that you will decide well what to do with the time you have ahead. Congratulations, Godspeed, take your RAM pride with you. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. You know, maybe virtual instruction due to this virus will help prevent some of the school district's enrollment growth concerns. No need to build new schools when everyone is stuck at home. I'd now like to reintroduce our principal, Mr. Weinstein, to begin the presentation of diplomas. We will now begin the presentation of the diplomas. As is a heritage tradition, the names of the graduates will be read by our student leaders. I will first award the diploma to our valedictorian, then our salutatorian, followed by our student council officers, who will in turn present the names of our remaining graduates. Sunmi Zhao. Ravi Balasubramanian. Bram Branscombe. Sam Catania. Eleanor Ferencic. Charisma Hassan. And Taylor Chennault. The first group of names will be read by Eleanor Ferencic. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein. Ian Abrams. Jade Edelman. Alexander Ahn. Braulio Abador. Mikkel Anderson. Sierra Anderson. Nicholas Anderson. Enrico Andreos. Spencer Anmuth. Jason Ayama. Nagin Arabi Shams Abadi. Mateen Armani. Jennifer Arman. Ika Ataf. Nafiz Azam. Lauren Bamford. In memoriam, Joey Baskin. Bachu Benot Katin. Michelangelo Berardi. Catherine Barbarian. Elijah Bigham. Scott Blender. Evan Bookbinder. Cameron Bowser. Jarrett Boyd. Katia Boyd. Marcus Bradley Lowry. Matthew Brady. William Branagh. Evan Brodo. Leia Broker. Maeve Brown. Lindsay Buden. Raymond Bush. Benjamin Bushnell. Kayla Bird. 
Thomas Callahan, Lindsay Cannon, Maya Cantu, Zachary Carr, Anna Chaudhry, Yuyun Chen, Nathan Clancy, Christiana Clayton, Brian Cohen, Emily Cohn, Jack Cohn, Emily Cole, Claudia Combe, Olivia Conrad, Daniel Cook, Sarah Cook, Maxwell Copley, Achara Cryer, John D'Amico, Clara Lou De Francesa Coelho, Jillian Daly, Melina Danielitis, Ryan Davis, Nicholas Dirk. Dylan Desner, Samantha Dichter, Matthew DiGico, Olivia DiGiovanni, Camille Donahoe, Drew Dorfman, Maya Doton, Jack Driscoll, Jennifer Dunlea, Raghav Devaldi, Lucy Dwyer, Benjamin Evans. Zoe Elston, Taylor Fagan, Emma Farber, Nolan Farber, Kira Farmer, Maxwell Fellheimer. Jasmine Felton Rooney, Christiana Filipov, Luke Fink, Paige Fisher, David Fitzgerald, Mary Elizabeth Fitzpatrick. Aiden Fleming, Laura Fleming, Naya Foreman, Ezra Frank, Garrett Friend, Aiden Gallery. Blake Garber, Nolan Gelinas, Samuel Garricky, Dana Ginsberg, Emily Glazer, 
Maggie Goldenberg, Zachary Gordon, John Gray. Your next set of names will be read by Sergeant at Arms Charisma Hassan. Thank you, Ellie. Now I'm going to read the next set of names. Julia Green. Julian Greenewalt. Nathan Greenhall. Sarah Grogan. Lucy Grover. Ahan Hockey Moglu. Justin Harrod. Max Harris. Sage Harris. Madeline Henderson. Sarah Heppen. Daniel Herrenkohl. Gabriel Hess. Henry Hockheimer. Santiago Hodge. Grace Honeyman. Sophia Hood. Samantha Hopko. Jacob Howie. Lauren Heiler. Noah Eisenberg. Benjamin Johnson. Andreas Kaiser. Pierce Callender. Wyatt Carson. Samuel Cartsonis. Terry Key. Jacqueline Kelly. Lauren Kelly. Camelia Conmarati. Brock Kickline. William Kleeman. Sydney Klein. Jordan Krindler. Liam Critchman. Christelle Latour. Anna Lee. Chloe Lee. Tiffany Lee. William Leedy. Maxwell Lease. Amelie LeMay. Roberto Lesser. Raquel Levitt. Jordan Levy. Max Lewenthal. Zoe Lichman. Jackson Lloyd. Owen Luby. Sean Legowski. Catherine Lynch. Yasmeen Majid. Jabril Mami. Sedona Martin. Liam Maruka. 
Milan Masudnia, Patrick McCann, Kennedy McCauley, Cameron McConnell, Henry McCullough, Marin McDonnell, James McKendrick, Aidan McKenna, Marin McSorley, Michael Meehan, Ethan Milani, Samuel Misher, Emily Mooney, Catherine Mori, Maximos Mosades, Hannah Mois, Rowan Murphy Usher, Amit Nafshi. Ayush Nanda, John Neary, Lucas Nelson, Victoria Natessen, Sarah Newman, Noah Niccolo. Alexa Obando, Michael O'Connor, Jack Odiorn, Philip O'Neill, Maxwell Ostrom, Theodore Paniagua. Ava Paternoster, Jeron Patterson, Brooke Paul, Andrew Peck, Lauren Peck, Amaro Pedreros Montes. Burke Peterson, Liam Pettit, Shana Poncharian, Eli Pisk, Sophia Plum Papas, Christian Quinn. The next set of names will be read by fellow Student Council Officer Taylor Schinnel. Thank you, Charisma. I'm now going to read the last set of names. Jay Ramaswamy. Amable Ramirez. Kyrie Ransom. Blake Rayfield, Jonah Reamer, Peter Rickles, Julia Rizzo, William Roach, Liam Rogers. Avril Rosen, Thomas Rosini, Daniel Rothman, Lorraine Rupert, Gianni Russo, George Sakian. 
Higren Sakian, Ava Sack, Noah Salmonson, Emily Sandler, Ovan Sarmiento, Frederick Schockinger, Joshua Schulman, Charlotte Scullin, Keith Scutchings III, Gabriella Seely, Todd Seelig, Sam Siegel, Austin Selhorn, Theo Sharp, Noah Shalansky, Lauren Shin, Nimai Shukla, Jacob Silverstein, Katarina Skorupski, Jackson Smith, Christopher Snyder, Robert Spears Azuk, Seth Spence, Zachary Spencer. Melanie Sporn, Henry Stefan, Ari Stein, Aaron Steinbach, Yasmin Stewart, Maria Luisa Stillwell Thimudo Gilman. Lane Stoddart the second, Quentin Stoloff, Jasmine Stone, Michael Strauss, Lane Sullivan, John Sullivan. Chloe Serbeck, Olivia Suter, Alexander Swartz, Michael Swartz, Michael Tabasso, Thomas Talvacchia. Duncan Tasker, Kayla Tavares, Dylan Tiford, Rowan Tehran, Nicholas Tevis, Jacob Titian. Diego Tofani, Alexander Torbeck, Bridget Tucker, Alex Turner, The Hajj Turner, James Twomey. Jonathan Tiska, Ann Urquhart, Marco Valenino, Christina Vardanov, Juan Vidal, 
Andrew Wallace. Alan Winooski. Tyler Winooski. Owen Warden. Marissa Weikert. Riley Wexler. Gordon Wexler. Adele Wilkin. Riley Williamson. Ayani Wilson Dudley. Jackson Winkler. Madison Wolfgang. Reed Wallach. Eli Wanacott. Emily Wright. Hannah Wright Riley. Nicole Xiang. Donna Xiao. Hannah Yi. Han Yilmaz. Grace Yuakim. Yue Yuan. Allison Zhang. Mona Lee Zhao. And Dixon Zor. Congratulations, graduates. We are not done yet. Your last assignments as seniors is to join me in welcoming back Mr. Copeland, who will be leading us in the final tassel ceremony to make you official graduates of Herodin High School. Mr. Weinstein and members of the Board of School Directors, at this time, it is a distinct privilege and honor for me as the Superintendent of Schools to present the Harriton High School Class of 2020 and to certify that each student has successfully completed their program of studies prescribed by the State of Pennsylvania and the Board of School Directors of Lower Marion School District required for a high school diploma. And now, will the Harriton High School Class of 2020 please virtually rise? Before you can move on, you've got to move the tassel. By the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the Board of School Directors of the Lower Marion School District, I declare each and every one of you to be a graduate of Harriton High School. Congratulations. Thank you.